I'm about to change your world when it comes to bacon. Today, we're making my grandmother's recipe for breakfast bacon. Growing up, my uh, one of my favorite memories is going to my grandparents' house to spend a week or two or three weeks during the summer uh, for Thanksgiving or Christmas, whenever we go. And she would always ask me what I want for breakfast, and the answer would always be biscuits and bacon. So her homemade biscuits uh, are something I never got to learn how to make, and I regret it to this day that I didn't sit down with her and have her teach me how to do it. But the thing I did always bring away from it is her bacon. I don't eat bacon because bacon does not like me. Uh, it's, we'd start out with adding flour to her Tupperware container. I put about two big scoops and I'm using her spoon. This is her silver that uh, I did inherit and this is her Tupperware. Um, and it actually is an old Tupperware. I don't even know what you would have used this for back in the day, but this is how we used it for the bacon. So to this, we're gonna add, and there's no measurements for this, okay? I'm not, I don't measure. So it's some onion powder. Some black pepper, do it to your taste. Some salt. I know you don't need salt because you're talking about bacon, but we put a little bit of salt in it anyway. It kind of just helped flavor the crust um, more than just the bacon. Now, over all those years, it was always the tradition that this is what we did. But I'm gonna turn the tradition a little bit because I found that for me, uh, this is not the best way to do this. What you would do is you would take your bacon, you would drop it in, you could do three or four pieces, You'd shake it up and you would come out with a, a piece of bacon that was lightly coated in this flour mixture, okay? However, you could only do a couple at a time and then it would become a mess trying to pull them out and separate them uh, and it was something that I found just didn't work for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and pour my mixture into one of her vintage plates that I inherited um, and put it in here. And then what I, I can do is just go through and dab on the mixture and I'm putting it into a heated skillet with oil. I want to have the extra oil in there so that this doesn't burn on the bottom. If you want to use a cast iron skillet and butter or lard or whatever you're using, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You're just going to cook the bacon. And it's not quite hot though because that should have sizzled. Okay, we'll do this a couple of these, get them ready. So I'm just taking thick cut bacon works best, but I grabbed what I could grab. Uh, bacon is so expensive right now that I just ended up with some of the less expensive bacon. And I cut it in half to do smaller pieces because they fit like a jigsaw puzzle better into a skillet, depending on what size skillet you have. If you don't have a large one, this works. Um, and it also kind of goes a little further, especially if you're feeding a crowd for the holidays. One thing I loved about breakfast at my grandmother's house is that she would have me help her uh, learn to cook. So uh, she was a cook. My mom was not. My mom uh, just, it was cooking was not a thing that she loved to do, but my grandmother did. Um, so we would always do big meals at her house and she's the one who taught me how to do a lot of the things that I do now. Um, but her biscuits were awesome. They were so good and I looked forward to them every year and I really regret that I didn't spend time learning how to do it. The best thing was when I would make honey butter, when she would make this breakfast for me, uh, I would put butter on my plate that was a little soft, and mix it with some honey and put that on the biscuits and it was the best thing ever. Okay, the, the pan's getting hot enough, we're gonna start putting these in. You're gonna wanna sizzle as you go in. All right, so there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these cook. And what this is, is it coats the outside of the bacon and gives it kind of a little crust, uh, which makes it really nice. Somehow, it is also absorbs the grease. And I don't know how to explain this any better. And I'm sure there's some uh, somebody out there who knows food science better than I do or just thinks I'm weird that this works for me. But it doesn't leave me with indigestion the way regular bacon does. And having this really crispy crust on the outside of it and kind of chewy bacon on the inside is just to me it's perfect it's the best bacon and you have to be careful you have to be really careful about this because you do not want to let this burn uh, it can burn really easily and then you're going to have this kind of burned crust on it um, but what we want is a hotter pan than this because that's just going to soak up all the grease 
So, so that you know, because I did have the, the heat for this was not quite ready. Um, this is actually absorbing the oil instead of cooking in it quickly. So this first batch is not going to work well, but this is what happens uh, when you're cooking. Sometimes this stuff just works out this way. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this batch and then show you the second batch and how it's supposed to work the best. And I love having this screen to cover all of my cooking on my stove. It helps contain the grease much better than if you just let it splat out. I love this thing. Uh, and I will link it down below from Amazon. Okay, I don't know if you can see this very well, but these actually didn't turn out so bad. Okay, they have this nice little crust that's on them that isn't normal for bacon, uh, and it makes it just a little nicer. Okay, now the goal of this is not to cook hard cooked bacon. You don't want to overdo it and have like this really super uh, overcooked bacon because you want that bit of chewy on the inside. Uh, but for those of you who really like well done bacon, then you can cook this longer and get well done bacon. So when I'm done with it, I will take it out and just put it on a tray to allow it to cool off. Let whatever grease is gonna dry, I meant drain, drain down. I don't put it on paper towels, I just let it go like this because I don't want it sitting in that grease, in a greasy paper towel, I want it to just do that. So now we're going with the second batch. A little hotter pan, ready to go. There we go. And what I did also is while these were waiting, they uh, started to absorb some of that flour, so I just dredged them a second time. And got a little bit more flour on the outside, so they'll have a little bit nicer crust on them. All right, and the splatter guard right on top to help keep the counter a little nicer than, than my mess that I usually make. And here we go. All right, I'm gonna check it and turn it over. It could have used a little bit more time. That's okay, we can always flip it back if we need to. And now that those are done, I'm gonna put the last couple of pieces in. I'm going to show you, this first batch is just a little bit underdone, but I don't know if you can see that there's a crust on it. It makes the bacon different than if you had just cooked it like oh, sorry, like it was. It's great. It needs a little bit more cook time though, so that's mine. Uh, my boys like it a little more well done than I do. I like it a little on the chewy side. As long as it's cooked and safe, then that's how I prefer it. It's just a little bit chewy. On the crispy side for them, which is what they like. Yeah, all right. You know, bacon is one of those things that you have a hard time figuring out how to store it for long term. Uh, you know, you have bacon that you buy fresh from the grocery store, and then what do you do with it? Like, can you store it for long term? Um, I have a post I'll leave in the description box below, and those of you on video are going to have to click that little arrow that opens everything up. Uh, but in the description box below, a post on all the ways that you can save bacon for long term. Because you can do it. May not always be the best bacon, but you can do it to always have bacon on hand whenever you need it. Okay, so here is the last of our bacon. So here we go. This is what it looks like. Okay, this is the bacon. It, it is, I, I'm promising you, it is a little different than regular bacon. It's got a crust on it that just makes it so different and tasty. And it allows me to eat bacon without wishing that I hadn't had bacon that day. Um, so I'm going to set these out, ready to go. Turn down the heat. Yeah, there we go. That one's cooked. That one's ready. Needs a little bit extra time on that side. Okay, so just as a quick uh, thing that you can do with these, if you end up making too much bacon that you can't use, I know, is that a thing? I don't know, is that a thing in anybody's house? 
Uh, but what you can do with this, turn this down just a tad, um, is that you can put it on, if you don't eat it all, you can put it back on a rack and put it into uh, a, a 350 degree oven and let it crisp up again. And it's going to kind of give you a good crisp crust on that bacon again to warm it up for another meal. And this was the kind of sizzle we were looking for the first time. All right, there is our bacon. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. So I hope you liked the idea of doing bacon a little differently than you normally would. If you want to see more videos about cooking, up here. And until I see you next time, happy bacon eating.